Francis. Hi, um, my name is Sarah, and this is my good friend Michael Coran, and we are here at AHA. Uh, love and friendship. Oh no, AHA, you're right. Uh -huh. oh, you're right, she is <laughs> so right, and AHA stands for a human among humans, and thank you for joining us, humans. And what will we be discussing tonight? Genesis chapter 19. Wow. Want to start reading it? This is yes. like a Stephen King mm -hmm. movie. This is about Sodom and the story of Abraham. What could we learn from Sodom? Abraham was promised to spread blessings to all families on earth. Sounds like in Sodom, somebody's not doing his job. Mm -hmm. but but the Hebrew Bible is honest, even with a promise. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're spreading blessings in Sodom. But the, the promise was, even if there's only 10 people, 10 good people yes. in the city of Sodom, that the Lord would not destroy it. Wow. That is how... So even, even, even God might have trouble keeping... That's hope for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, people, have, people or even divinity has trouble keeping their word, it seems. You, you mm -hmm. noticed that when we were reading it before. Mm -hmm. What do we make of that? Well, maybe we'll get there and then we'll see. We will figure it out. Yes. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting near the city gate. And in other words, and, and Sarah was mentioning before, Another word for angels in the Hebrew Bible is just messengers. It could just be human mm -hmm. beings. You might have noticed that some human beings are angels. Very much so. <laughs> when he saw them, he got up and went to, went to them and bowed face down on the ground. Lot said, Sirs, please come to my house, spend the night. There you can wash your feet, and then tomorrow you may continue your journey. So his forehead perhaps is on the ground, yes? Mm -hmm. Maybe not his whole face, I don't think. The so angel. he's a good guy, Lot. Mm -hmm. Boy, what a, so far, we'll see. Very hospitable. We'll see. The mm. angels answered, no, we will spend the night in the city's public square. So what do you make of that? They, they're, they're, are they tempting? They... Are they like um, seducing the city of Lot? The city of Sodom? I think they really want to check out the scene. Boy, oh, that's the way of checking. Ah, mm -hmm. I see. You're kind of. What do you think they want to do? I think they are. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you. But it might be a temptation too hard for Sodom to resist these two strangers. Not, they could have been okay in Lot's home. Mm -hmm. But they were supposed to check out the city. Mm -hmm. So that this is their way of doing it. But Lot begged them to come. So they agreed and went to his house. Oh, so they didn't. Then Lot prepared a meal for them. He baked bread without yeast and they ate it. So he, he didn't have all the ingredients. He was in a hurry. Yes, he wanted to feed them quickly. Mm -hmm. So what do we make of the... So they didn't spend the night in the square, even though they wanted to. So how could they check out if... The people in Sodom, if there were just people or not, they they don't have they did not have yet have a chance, right? They're gonna maybe stick around tomorrow. Oh, I or supposedly, but look what happens next. Before bedtime, men both young and old and from every part of Sodom surrounded Lot's house. Oh. They called to Lot, "Where are the two men who came to you tonight?" Bring them out to us so we can have sexual relations with them. Or in the, in the Hebrew it says, so we shall know them. Which could, which probably could mean that, but not necessarily, mm -hmm. not totally. Lot went outside to them, closing the door behind him. Oh, so he's caring for them and his family, and he doesn't, risking his own life. He doesn't want them to overhear or be exposed to the conversation. Or maybe they, I think they can hear through the door, oh. but protecting them, and protecting strangers is um, a highly commendable mm -hmm. to be kind to strangers. 
certainly for our wor our country now. Mm, oh, definitely. To be kind to strangers was of such importance. We'll see how Lot handles other things that are important to him. So Lot closed the door behind him. He said, "No, my brothers, do not do this evil thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. I will give them to you." and you may do anything you want with them. But please don't do anything to these men. They have come to my house and I must protect them. Wow. Ugh, not good. No, I understand. Before we judge him, <laughs> help us hard it's not really to judge him. It's really hard. Hard not to judge him. <laughs> but he, he wants to protect the strangers. Of course, he didn't have to say the second thing. Mm -mm. What's going on? He, he, he could have said, and if he knew his city, he would know they weren't interested in women the way they were interested in men. Yikes. It's like he's, he has a barter thing going. Yes. For these two men that he doesn't know. Right. So it's hard not to judge Lot. <laughs> really difficult. Very, very hard. Ugh. But we can see... <laughs> From his perspective, mm -hmm. kindness to strangers that he took into mm -hmm. his home is of great importance to him. Mm -hmm. Whatever he feels about these daughters, wow. That's rough. And I really hope the daughters did not hear through the door. They probably did. Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Oh. So Lot doesn't seem to be very much better than the people in Sodom. Mm -mm. Let his daughters be raped. No. Not let, but encourage. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Giving permission as a barter to And bringing it up. Mm -hmm. uh. The men around the house answered, move out of the way. Then they said to each other, this man, Lot, came to our city as a stranger, and now he wants to tell us what to do. They don't want that. They don't like that. And maybe Lot, maybe to be kind to Lot, he knew they weren't. Let's, you know, if there's a way to not be judging. Mm -hmm. One possibility is he knew they weren't interested in their daughters. Mm -hmm. That's one possibility. But he wanted to show he was really wanting to protect the men. That's a nicer, yes? Mm. That's a very generous... Yes, and we can learn that. There's possibilities yeah, when things seem so horrible. Mm -hmm. There's possibilities of understanding mm -hmm. them in a generous light. They said to Lot... As soon as we share that, or I said it, I feel better toward Lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. No, I understand. They said to Lot, we will do worse things to you than to them. They started pushing him back and were ready to break down the door. So they're not into discussion or barter. Mm -mm. But the two men staying with Lot opened the door, pulled him back inside the house, and then closed the door. They struck those outside with blindness, a blinding flash, so the men, both young and old, could not find the door. Wow. Some people think they might have had mirrors that could reflect the sun, mm. or how it, or maybe more. That more, makes sense. More Star Wars power. Mm -hmm. What do we think of the men, these messengers, these angels? They seem pretty angelic right now. Oh, because they're protecting. Protecting Lot. Yeah, but I'm not for, well, they blinded people, but only mm. temporarily. But these people were. So so aggressive. Yes, but and only temporarily. And they said that they were gonna. They all wanted sexual relations with the two men. To know, yes, to know them. Yeah. So that they're just protecting themselves. Yeah. The two men said to Lot, "Do you have any other relatives in this city? Do you have any sons-in-law, da sons, daughters, or any other relatives? If you do, tell them to leave now because we are about to destroy this city." The Lord has heard of all the evil that is here, so he has sent us to destroy it. Wow, and we discussed this. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Yahweh wanted them to check it out and not destroy it. And if, even if there was ten good people, he would not, not destroy yes, it. Not yes, and, and there seems to possibly be this lot, his wife, 
his two daughters, that's four already. Mm -hmm. Sons-in-laws, daughters-in-laws, what else does he say? Sons, any other relatives. They don't, and they don't, they're not all knowing, they don't mm -hmm. know stuff. So there could have been ten. Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm -hmm. So, and will God go along with them? So these messengers, who could have been humans, mm -hmm. are understandably frightened and angry. Mm -hmm. And people can do all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. when they're frightened and angry. It's true. Very, very true. Even if you're a messenger of the Lord, Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So Lot went out and said to his future sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughter. Oh, he was able to get out of the house now so because now they're they, blind. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry and leave this city. The Lord is about to destroy it. But they thought Lot was joking. And good old Lot, he's caring for them. Mm -hmm. But the, the brother-in-law, the sons-in-laws are not taking it seriously. Now, what do you make that this is in the Bible? This isn't just a goody good story. Mm -hmm. This isn't God is good and we're mm -hmm. and we'll all be like Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and we'll be nice. Not that I've seen the movie yet, but I should. <laughs> no. Why so why do you think the rabbis included the story? I think it's about trust. Tell me and more. And who to, who to listen to, who to believe. And who do we believe? Right now it's very confusing. <laughs> yes, it's very. Because you have Yahweh saying, prom made a promise, There was if there was 10 people or less that were good, he would not destroy the city. 10 or more, yes. Oh, 10 or more. I'm yeah. sorry, 10 or more. We don't know if there's 10 or more. We know he has two daughters and he has sons-in-laws. He, he Maybe. They, they were wondering if he does. Okay. But he has two... Um, but, but he went to they, talk to his future sons-in-law. Right, so the future sons-in-law. So, oh, okay. Went out and said to his future sons-in-law. And he has two daughters himself. I mean, we're getting close to 10. And maybe sons. They don't know. Exactly. Or cousins. Or exactly. he has a wife. So mm -hmm. she has she has relatives. She's mm -hmm. from Sodom. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I love it because it's honest, though. Mm -hmm. I love... It's horrible... Mm -hmm. worse than horrible and Yahweh isn't stopping his messengers no. he's not gonna he's gonna destroy the city so it's a mess and who do we trust? Uh, um, right now I'm just, I'm just going with what the messengers are doing. So you're trusting them. They didn't do their job, though. They, they, as you would say, they lied. They did. I don't know. Right now, I'm not trusting anyone. Right. That I'm just, I'm just to... sitting back and going to read the next line. Okay. <laughs> um, who do you trust? I, forgive me for saying this. Yeah. Love the story because there's no one we can trust. Mm -hmm. Maybe Lot. Mm -hmm. If Lot knew they wouldn't take his daughters, there's a possibility to trust Lot. Mm -hmm. May oh, but only maybe. Mm -hmm. And maybe no one. And I grew up that way. There was no one to trust. You could understand. Very much so. So there's no one. Very much so. So I, yeah. I, I love this honesty mm -hmm. of the story. Mm -hmm. That they're not just saying God is good at all. With messengers are good at all. And so sometimes there's no one, not even God, to trust. And then... We have to learn how to find people or divinities we can trust, or at least we can build trust with. Sometimes it has to be built. Mm -hmm. If you want trustworthy people, how can we begin to trust each other? Very good point. A friend of mine got married to 
a lovely man. And he said, after we're, now that we're married, you have to cook for me, wash for me, and shop for me. And she said, what do you mean? What world are you living in? Women are liberated now. That's not what marriage is about. He said, I'm sorry, you have to do that. We're married. And she said, you can't talk to me that way. Come and let's see a therapist. They go to the therapist, and the therapist says to her, he can say whatever he wants. It's a free country. You just don't have to listen to him. And once that was clear, he stopped saying it. And, they, and then they started building a more mutual conversation on what marriage was. So they began to build more trust. Mm -hmm. Even though, as many people, many of us, are untrustworthy, but maybe we can learn to grow more trustworthy. It's a great line in the New Testament Someone comes to Joshua Jesus, I call him Joshua because it was the Zebra Joshua Jesus, and says, Lord, you're good. And he says, Don't call me good. Only God is good. Oh. So I was very honest again. We and we can be honest with ourselves. We can try to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not all that trustworthy either. Mm -hmm. I make all kinds of vows, don't do them. No, I'm the same way. I can only grow, and I think when people disappoint me, I do reflect back on myself and think, all right, I know I've done the same thing. Wow. This, this probably wouldn't bother me as much if I, if I couldn't hadn't. relate to it. Yes. We're, we're cooking with gas. Let's keep going. Yeah, okay. At dawn the next morning, the angels begged Lot to hurry. They said, go. Take your wife and your daughters with you so you will not be destroyed when the city is punished. Wow. But Lot delayed, so the two men took the hands of Lot, his wife, and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. Well, so Lot didn't want to just listen to these guys, mm -hmm. but he let them pull them along. So the Lord was merciful. I see them, one holding one hand of Lot and, the, and one hand of his wife, and the other holding the two hands of the daughters. The Lord was merciful to And those to poor son-in-laws. Oh. oh, my. Whoa. But there's, again, brute honesty. I know. We might have to teach this, these messengers in the Lord to be more just. Mm -hmm. Abraham started by arguing with, mm -hmm. good for Abraham. Good for Abraham, definitely. So the Lord was merciful to Lot and his family. After they brought them out of the city, one of the men said, Run for your lives. Don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Run to the mountains or you will be destroyed. But Lot said to one of them, Sir, please don't force me to go so far. You have been merciful and kind to me and have saved my life, but I can't run to the mountains. The disaster will catch me and I will die. Look, that little town over there that is not too far away. Let me run there. It's really just a little town and I'll be safe there. Wow, good for Lot. Bargaining, arguing, convincing. The angel said to Lot, Very well, I will allow you to do this also. I will not destroy that town, but run there fast because I cannot destroy Sodom until you are safely in that town. That town is named Zoar because it is little. And that's wow. the Hebrew word for little. What do you think and feel about this? You know, it's... Uh, it's, it sounds like Sodom is really going to get destroyed. It's really going to happen. And what do you think about, and feel about that? It's a lot. Some innocent people are going to lose their lives. Wow. It's going to be intense. And why is this in the Bible then? To teach us a lesson. A lesson that what? We will find out. <laughs> wow. What do you think? Why is it in the Bible? I mean, I like it honestly because there are natural disasters. Mm hmm that destroy the innocent with the wicked. Mm. And just to know that's the way the world often works. Mm -hmm. And I like it because it's saying that we need, Israel means to wrestle with God, we need to wrestle with God 
to help God be more just, mm -hmm. as Abraham did. Mm -hmm. and it's an, Abraham started that, or even Cain started that, mm -hmm. saying, you have to help me, God. And, and God said, I'll put a mark on your forehead so no one will harm you. If they do, they're going to be sorry. Mm -hmm. So you can't argue with fate or God or your inner voices. Mm -hmm. so, no, you argue with them by talking with them or... Or wrestling. The Hebrew Israel used to wrestle with God. All kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Playing with them. Bargaining. <laughs> You're a just voice. You... <laughs> <laughs> Well, when we're hurt, as we learn, I can tell myself, okay, Michael, I understand you're hurt. You wanted someone you, you wanted someone you could respect and who you could trust, and they haven't been. So I can sense it's really painful for you. I love you, and I hope you can in time heal your pain and begin to find ways to build trust with people. So that's talking to my hurt parts of me. And this story encourages that, or could. What, the, ha what happens next? The sun had already come up when Lot entered Zor. The Lord sent a rain of burning sulfur, oh. sulfur and fire down from the sky, on Sodom and Gomorrah. And Gomorrah, where did that come? It's just collateral damage. Oh. And destroyed those cities. He also destroyed the whole Jordan Valley. Whoa! Everyone living in the cities and even all the plants. Oh! At that point, Lot's wife looked back. When she did, she became a pillar of salt. Okay, stop now. What do you feel and think? Okay, this is awful. The plants. Oh, everything got destroyed. I think it's trying to say, among other things, that the powers in the world, including God, can be unjustly vicious. Mm -hmm. And we need to struggle with that. And we can do, the, and some of us do that with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're unjustly harsh. Mm -hmm and meet people who are like that. And then this story might be saying, this is the way it is often. And I mean, at least Lot and his daughters are saved, not the wife even. Wow. Even How did the wife, the wife just out of grief became a pillar of salt or what happened there? It could be. I mean, there are mm -hmm. literally pillars of salt near the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the storyteller might have seen those and some of them look like people and they put this into the story. Um, but just to take the story, it, it could be mm -hmm. you look back too much. Yeah, it's true. You look back too much and... Yeah. The tears mm -hmm. <laughs> and the salt and the tears, and you're gone. I mm -hmm. think I do that too much. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomor Gomorrah and all the Jordan Valley and saw smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. God destroyed the sea. No, I think you jumped ahead. You're in, into the destruction. Oh, the silly of the no. I, oh, here the pillar of salt. Yes. At the point, Lot's wife looked back. She became a pillar of salt. Oh, you're right. Early you're right. the next morning. Yes. Yep. Yep. He got up. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and all the Jordan Valley and saw smoke rising like smoke from a furnace. Wow. God destroyed the cities in the valley, but He remembered what Abraham had asked. So God saved Lot's life, but He destroyed. The city where Lot had lived. What do you think of that? Uh, it seems God's memory wasn't quite clear no. either. Mm -mm. God saved because Lot's life. 
But he remembered what Abraham but asked Abraham for. Abraham just didn't ask for no. Lot. Maybe he was thinking only Lot. He said ten or more yes. good people ten to or, not destroy. Yes. Wow. So this can be a lot of miscommunication even mm -hmm. with... And forgive me again, part of me loves it. This is the way life is with ourselves and our world. This is this is intense. Yeah. Lot was afraid to continue living in... Well, that's just... We, oh. I think it's time to say yeah. the final thoughts about this. We'll be half back in two weeks um, <laughs> to continue this, to end this story. Talk about how to build trust in an untrustworthy world. How to build trust inside ourselves. How to communicate with ourselves. Yep. How to escape the, <laughs> the hell that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. At least Lot got out. We'll see Barry scarred. We'll see that in two weeks. And you, any final feelings and thoughts? Um, I am going to work on moving through anger and acceptance. Which means? Uh, I'm going to work on your technique. I'm going to uh, talk to myself and my emotions and give myself self-care. Wow. And, um, and, for, and for anger, according to nonviolent communication, which you're an expert on, of course, you, you really get it out. Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself permission to, if you don't get it out, it's going to... Mm -hmm. Definitely. And after you get it out, then you can say, oh, okay, I got it out. Now, you got to get, as you know, one at a time. Now I can give myself some compassion for that. Mm -hmm. But if you do it before you get the anger out, <laughs> right. too quick. What's the best way to get the anger out? Five seconds. Scream 